They say when you go to Europe, aka Kisumu City, you do what the Europeans do. And at Dunga Beach, they eat fish. It's just in time for afterwards and for dinner. And today we are eating fish at the lake, but that's not what brought us here today. We are here to talk about where this fish comes from. I am from Kisumu County and uh, I come from around the lake shore. I, I want you to paint this picture. Uh, you go home from work, you're very tired, and then you reach there and you find no home. Magic, right? So that is what happens to people around the lake shore when flooding happens. You lose your home. Uh, Apudo was a person has been born and bred by the Lake Show for over 20 years. Then comes 2020, climate change, the backflow of the lake, flooding, losing our homes, our pets, and other family members. Imagine your mom having to stay with her friends. I hope you're still imagining. Sasa tuko na miaka 5 nje. Kama tunaishi tu nje. Kama hivi unapiga, tunatoka, tunaenda pale pengine tena. Sasa maji iliharibu hii nyumba kabisa. Si wezi kurudi hapa. Hii nyumba imeharibika hata kama umeingia hapa ndani. Unaweza kuona vile imeharibika sasa. Kisumu is spectacular. Just look at it. The views from the sky are breathtaking, showing off the best of the city. But to the ground, Kisumu is drowning, and Lake Victoria is showing no mercy. With the backflows now a frequent occurrence, Kisumu is struggling to keep its head above water. Seven years ago, this is where Ombaka Secondary School was physically here. But it's not here anymore. It, was, it had to be relocated about five years ago because of the consistent flooding of the Lake Victoria. Now, I'd just like to show you why this flooding necessitated the government to move it. You see, this, this is how high the water rose. And the government says after consistent flooding, they had no choice but to relocate the school. So, this line here, I stand against the wall. That's how high the water rose. So if I had been here at the time of those flooding, I would be submerged on the above water. So the school was relocated just a few feet, a few meters away from here, and the entire compound is abandoned, but it did stay abandoned for long. Shortly after the students left, the communities moved in. And the communities said, just as the school, the students were running for their lives, they too were running for their lives, and they thought this school would offer them refuge. Let's take a look. Mm. Mm. 
ya rent ili ni shida. Mm. Oh, sasa kuna litoka kwa kulienda mali kwa kukomboa nyumba. Yes. Sasa kuna kabiri. Yes. Na kwako sasa hivi ni nini niko? Sasa hivi hakuna vitu mm. kwa sababu nyumba kuna. Ni baba yote na mm. baba moja yote na mbwa. Mm. Mm. Nakaa hapa watu wangapi? Mm. Kwa kwa hiyo kwa nzima. Kwa hiyo kwa hapa tuko na seven households. Mm. Mm. Wote mko hapa tu. Yes. Tuko tuko kwa hapa wote. Mm. Mm. Serikali ya Jabarbu kwa toa hapa kwa sababu ni ile shule ya serikali ya Ribu. Kwa hiyo maisha yangu imekuwa hivyo tu imekuwa kila mwaka. Kila mwaka huwezi kuweka vitu. Naona sasa hivi tanga kuna. Mm. Naweka tu ile mattress chains. Naona hivi. Mm. Naweka hapa chini na ngana na watoto. Hii mattress moja ndio malala wa watoto hey, wa watu wa watu, 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 watu mm. wa isa watu wa watu wangu. Watu wangu. Watu wako ni kuna ya 16 years old na 9 years old and 6 ushaisikia neno climate change. Eh nimesikia kwa tangi climate change. Mm. Nimesikia kwa redio nimesikia wakisema climate change. Mm. Si kama nimesikia nimesema tu ngiona tu atindio hii. Mm. Maisha tuko nayo sasa. Mm. Hata mm. kama zamani tulikuwa tunalima sukuma, kunde, na ilikuwa watu wanakuja na nachukua tulikuwa na pesa. Na sasa hizo samba zote kuna maji. So this is one of the larger classrooms at this school and it's about three times the size of the other room we just saw and uh, in my conversations with one of the, the families that live here I was wondering how a family got so lucky to get such a large uh, room and I was told it's because the family that lives here it comprises of 12 people. After 2020, after we've lost everything that we had, because all we own is a home and a land, I felt depressed. Long time. For a moment, I felt like taking away my life. Suicidal thoughts started cropping in. I felt like going to Lake Victoria and letting that water swallow me in just the same way Lake Victoria took everything that we had because of flooding. To date, thousands of families have been displaced and while most have been able to rebuild their lives, many others haven't. Janet's home is only a few meters from what used to be Ombaka Secondary School. She walks me to what remains of it and shows me the extent of the destruction. <laughs> Sasa ana vile ibati. Hapa kwenye tumesimama ilikuwa ni sitting room. Ilikuwa sitting room. Hapa ilikuwa bedroom. Sasa ilikuwa na uh, store. Mm. 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 vitanda huko baba iliacha. Iliacha. Si unaona matres peke yake huko. Si mm. ilichoka. Mm. Mm. Matres kibeba kitanda yenyewe tako na mali pa kuweka. Si uliona kama ile nyumba ni kidogo. Mm. Sasa ngiona ni wache tu. <laughs> Ile ndio ilikuwa fupi ya mabilo ya bana ilikuwa tu kawaida. Mm. Mm. Zama yingi ni na wingi na udongo hii. Mm. Mm. Nimeshukisha. Mm. Nimeshukiza mtichini. Na shamba yake jumbe ilikuwa kiasi gani? Ilikuwa 3 acres. Na niacha yote ni niacha. Niacha. Ni tatu tena ku 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 revisit tuseme labda siku moja nitarudi nichukue hiyo 3 acres ni niacha ni. Iko iko maji iko huko. Kasa na rivi siti nini When I raised my hand I can literally touch the roof But under normal circumstances that would be impossible Because you know how tall the roof is in a house But now because of the flooding the house has sunk And come so low And this roof here In Leo they call it Osiro Park But in my village we call it Nisaretua it's not supposed to be hanging this way, literally reaching my hip. It's not supposed to be hanging this way. It's supposed to hang above your head so that children can't reach it and cats can't reach it either. But it being this way is just an illustration of how low the house has sunk following the flooding. Have you ever heard of the term climate change? Climate change, I had. What do you think it means? It means that uh, there is some uh, period where the atmosphere changes the, the situation. 
Mm-hmm. It uh, takes some uh, some time you know, to find uh, there is a moisture mm-hmm. that that blocks the the moisture. Mm-hmm. So it uh, it uh, me uh, it uh, removes the movement of the air from the lake mm-hmm. basin mm-hmm. to the area to the interior. Mm-hmm. So sometimes we experience the the, the rain. Sometimes we don't get it because due to the uh, mm. climate change. So do you believe what's happening here in the climate change? Uh, what is that happening in this area? Mm. Do you think it's linked to climate change? Mm. What I can say that uh, formerly we had some big trees that were here. Mm. And nowadays they are cut. They are not there. So we don't get anything of such kind. If you want to be free and live like a child again, why stress about germs? If you must worry, then worry about winning. Why worry about germs? When you come home, bring tales and stories. Why bringing germs? Shield your families from germs. When dental is a part of every household bucket, then you and your family can stay protected from up to 100 illness causing germs. Everyday use of dental keeps my loved ones protected. Tommy Just ensure that moves die. Nini? Donga amepasture mtu. Zi. Nenda kwa na padre. Padre yako Kenya. Stuck in mama. Kuzikuwa na nguri. This is where you're throwing money down the drain. How? On this cleaning product. Impossible. Habic Tenex. When other cleaners blow away, Habic Tenex's viscous formula in only one round of application gives you sparkling, clean toilet. Habic, 10 times better cleaning than other cleaning products. And great savings too. This is NTV. NTV Tonight Headlines in association with NCBA Bank. tonight Mmoja aliuliwa jioni na huyu wa usiku hii ni waliua Tunaomba tuwe kalmu Tafadhali tuomba kwa heshima Tumekuja hapa serikali imefika hapa tutashughulikia tutatoka hapa tutatulishwa hudumu Tension remains high in Sondu on the border of Kericho and Kisumu counties following the killing of two people and theft of herds of livestock Also tonight Sio askari alikuja kanikuta hapo tu nimekaji aliambia mama kuja kuna kitu nataka kukuambia kasi mama nikaenda hapo alikuwa mama utapeleka kotini Wednesday lakini Thursday utawachilia it's a ploy to fix me Teresia Wanjero denies claims of drug peddling as she accuses the police of trying to link her to the marijuana hole and 13 million shillings recovered during a police raid in Ngara estate last week plus we have lived here for over 20 years matuna shida na hiyo nyumba yao hiyo ni nyumba yao hata mmeona sisi tumerudisha ile fence yetu ilikuwa pale we are not erecting a new fence this fence has been there for the last 70 years and whose land is it Two families locked in a property dispute in Nairobi's affluent Lovington area. And sina shida kabisa na ndugu zangu watu wa upinzani. They are a constitutional uh, entity just like the way we are a constitutional government. President Ruto now says he holds no grudge against the opposition as he calls Azimio to check the excesses of government within the confines of the law. NTV Tonight Headlines in association with NCBA Bank. In over 60 years of dealing with numbers, we've learned that the numbers that matter the most to you are the ones that matter the most to us. NCBA Bank, go for it.
Whatever he does for the rest of his career, Harry Kane will always be considered one of England's finest and most favourite footballers. For club and country, Kane has been an excellent servant and performer. But now it is time for Kane to start from scratch at a new club in a new country, perhaps poised to become a favourite at Bayern Munich. We are calling you to be part and parcel of the fastest growing satellite town in this city. We are developing and building a beautiful Achievers Gate. This is a chance that you cannot afford to miss. Call this number 0790 300 300. Daring Abroad makes me dare. It's the only show of its kind in the world. And now it's bigger and even more entertaining and informative than before. From London to Jersey Island. Goma in the Democratic Republic of Congo to the scenic features of Uganda, the Pearl of Africa. And many more places abroad and at home. I watch uh, Daring Abroad. I like the stories which people bring. Daring Abroad every Saturday at 7.30 p.m. with repeats every Sunday at 1.30 p.m. on NTV. To be a road, by the way, right now it looks like grass and underwater, but it's supposed to be a road and it's been submerged since April. And so, the only way the people there can get home and get to this other side is if they either went through the water here or use a boat in that canal. That's a happy water in Kwanzaa. You imagine a kuja, so you didn't talk. In a kuja, quite period, I love me talk. How many people have been affected by these floods in this area? Yeah, close to 600 households have been affected and some of them have been... Uh, uh, we have uh, Ombaka Advocation Center. Some of them are currently staying in Ombaka, former Ombaka Secondary School that was relocated. Yes. How many have been permanently displaced? The permanent displaced are 256. See those houses over there? They are surrounded by water, yet their owners still live there. Boats such as this are how the locals in Kasumi, the village here in Ahero in Kisumu County gets by. Because the road is literally next to us, but there is no way through because the lake which is a little down there has flooded the whole place including the road. So for the people over there yes. who are not exactly underwater, but yes. they are surrounded by water, yes. do you have plans to forcefully evacuate them or do you just leave it to them to decide if they want to live or not? The plan that we have right now, I can't say that say, we have a plan. We normally just evacuate them in case of flood, then flood Ikeenda, we, they, they, they normally come back. Pollution has been cited as one of the key contributors to the rising of the lake. On Climate Hackers, we meet a team of young people providing a solution for this space. It's our second day in Kisumu County and today we joined a group of young people including children who are raising awareness against plastic pollution and wearing gloves, we've got a here, we're picking up some trash, this pile here is already all the trash that's been collected from this field here. Plastic bags generally do not disintegrate in the environment, you can see this 
it's been months of I'm doing bad. But the fact that it's only for the most of us just means that it's been on the ground for quite a long time. But for which to fully decompose, that's not possible. So if it were to rain, all these fragments will be swept into the water loop and then you drink that water, you drink plastic. So we are taking a journey on with Victoria. It's all about right now, but we are going on to a bigger one so that we can sail the way to the Kenya Marine Fisheries Research Institute and um, try to observe the extent of pollution in the lake. The lake stinks, by the way. The water is green, you can't see through. And the smell, there's something about it that's irritating the thought. So when we get into the bigger boat, we're going to sail for a little bit, look at the extent of the pollution in the lake, and then try to see if we can grab some of the plastic that is in the water. is for us um, a troll a troll cleanup to understand what type of plastic is at the bottom of the lake the second thing is we are collecting data on the types of plastic that float on the top of the lake for an autonomous water drone that Jeremy and a team of other young people will be building so I expect we've already seen some diapers we've seen some um, floating hyacinth we've seen plastic bottles so I think we're going to see a lot of the plastic that we see on the shores of the lake during cleanups but we're going to see it more worn out and more beaten down by the lake. Trolling is basically a fishing method often used by commercial fishing vessels and involves dragging fishing nets along the bottom of the water. It is a frowned upon method because it drags everything in its path and can cause damage to the marine ecosystem. But it is perfect for our mission here today because this is the first time that the Kenya Marine and Fisheries Institute is collecting data on the extent of plastic pollution in Lake Victoria. Before we set sail, the captain of this boat had warned that the trawler would drag anything from the bottom of the lake and said we may also pull up some fish because the nature of trawlers is that they literally drag from the bottom anything and everything that the net will catch. So we did troll around for about 20-30 minutes and when the nets are pulled up, these three pet crates are what came up. This one here has plastic, that one has logs and the last one there has fish. All three came from the trawlers. So Michelle, how are you feeling about it? Like it's actually, it's not surprising because there's this statistic that um, says that by the year 2050 there'll be more plastic in the oceans than fish. So as you can see like here there's literally more plastic than fish in the lake. Like we spent, with the half hour we spent trolling we picked up more plastic than we picked up fish. And of course the plastic finds, we mo we, the most, of, most of it is the ghost nets. Um, these nets made of plastic, of course it doesn't degrade for up to 450 years. So it continues fishing and it continues capturing marine life. We have water bottles. The, it's a mix of like fishing gear and household plastic. So like water bottles, um, there was a packet of um, washing detergent, stuff like that. Yeah. So what are you going to do with this, um, this box of plastic? So it's been sorted. The thing with ghost fishing nets is there's not many people that recycle them, that recycle them, but we're still going to try to find a recycler. The bottles as well. So basically in this pile, what can be recycled will be recycled, and what can't will unfortunately end up in the county dumping site. Jeremy and Michelle are siblings and are both teenagers. At the height of the COVID pandemic, they put their time to use and founded Osiepe Sango, an organization of like-minded young people who are raising their voices against pollution in Lake Victoria. Jeremy is now putting together a drone that he and two other classmates believe will be a game changer. 
you can see that here we're setting up all of the propulsion systems the cameras and everything and then all the way down here we initialize the web server that is going to be working with it so by virtue of using a web server rather than just a conventional app it allows you more flexibility to be able to also alter parts of it yourself but then it also allows you to it takes away that restriction of having to install something first so this means that any phone as long as you know the details will be able to operate the drone properly and efficiently this is the drone itself now the way it's currently supposed to work is for surface level detection and picking up trash the trash is going when it's floating it will be moving and then the trash is going to flow into the body cavity and once the trash has flown in the gate is going to be cut loose and then it's going to close and lock it in so that means that whatever direction you're moving the trash won't be able to come out and go back into the water which then means that the data we're also collecting will be almost 100 percent accurate because everything that it's accounted for is everything that it's collected for now this prototype can only float but Jeremy and his team are working on a submersible version that can collect plastic underwater. Oh, and did I mention that these boys are only 15 years old? Yep. But let me just ask you a question. Is that a fault of Lake Victoria? Is it her fault? Of course not. Mother Nature is never wrong. It is us human beings that we don't do our responsibility to protect her. It is my role to take care of my environment so that Mother Nature cannot come and take its due course on me again. Today the world faces the triple planetary crisis of climate change, pollution and biodiversity loss. And all these three are interconnected because one leads into the other and the other and the other. And today as we were sailing the Lake Victoria, we did manage to pull a lot of plastic because we had targeted to do that. And why I'm holding a plastic bottle in my hand is because this is now part of our life. Walking around with a plastic bottle to quench your thirst whenever. But then there's that temptation to roll down your window when you're done with that bottle and just toss it out. Where it lands, you don't really care about that. But today I want you to be earthwise. That's my call to action. Be earthwise and think about where that bottle ends up when you toss it out because it will end up in places like this, like Victoria. And this pollution, as it rises and rises, it contributes to the flooding of the lake when the heavy rains come. So be earthwise and care about where that bottle ends up because life with plastic ain't fantastic. See you again next week.